be defeated. The people united will never 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 be defeated. The people. All right, when our community is under attack, what do we do? That's right, when our community is under attack, what do we do? When our community is under attack, what do we do? When our community is under attack, what do we do? When our communities are under attack, what do we do? When our communities are under attack, what do we do? I can't hear you. What did I say? When our communities are under attack, what do we do? Gracias. Gracias. Uh, uh, well, stop, she's gonna stop. Uh, stop. 
Hello everyone and we are so happy to have everyone here today. My name is Maria Fort and I am an organizer with New Bedford, Massachusetts and uh, Indivisible Southeast Massachusetts and Coalition. <laughs> Coalition for Social Justice. We are here today to stand to together in solidarity to protest Sheriff Hartz's proposal to employ prisoners to build wall in Mexico, charging $5 a day, and his proposal in working with ICE. Today, Sheriff Hartson formally signed, well, excuse me, yesterday, Sheriff Hartson formally signed up to eight to ten people working with ICE in order to allegedly find and detain undocumented people accused of doing criminal acts. This has happened before, and nothing good came out of it then, and nothing good will yes. come out of it now. Right. Yes. 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 The sheriff's men will be running around the streets of Bristol County racially profiling people. You know it, people of color, and detaining them. We know many innocent people, as well as citizens, will be a accustomed and detained, unable to defend themselves because they lack the means. Why do, why do this when the New Bedford Police Department has been successfully working with immigrant communities to develop trust so that they can help de deter any criminals? I'll tell you why. Because Sheriff Hawson feels like he can advance his career on the backs of poor of immigrants. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe land a job with the Trump administration. Yeah. <laughs> and we also know that majority of voters in this state and, and the country have rejected Trump's plan to build a wall between the U.S. and the Mexico, but not Sheriff Hartson. In addition to his proposal to transport prisoners to build this wall, he would like to reinstitute the $5 a day fee in jail. These two plans are disturbing for many reasons. Massachusetts has prisons that are populated by people serving long terms for nonviolent crimes. This cruel punishment is directly mainly at people of color who are largely in need of drug treatment. We know that Sheriff Hudson's practice involved denying human rights. He put prisoners in chain gangs to work that could have employed others in need of jobs in our area. Prisoners are human right. beings that deserve rights while they are paying for the crimes that they committed. Most have good families that care about them and that wants to see them be treated right. Both of these acts would punish the individual as well as punish the families. Regarding undocumented people, we know that the vast majority of them are working hard and often victims of rather than perpetrators. Yet we have a sheriff who has the power to make changes that can make our community better, but instead he wants to use prisoners to build a wall that targets them as the enemy. This will not resolve America's problem. Using the public's tax dollars or charging prisoners to live while they build a wall in Mexico would be a wasteful and a heartless act. Rico! Especially to low-income families who don't have the money to pay for this. We need, a, we need to focus our efforts on criminal justice reform, yes, particularly yes. doing right. away with mandatory minimum sentencing and increasing job training opportunities. Right. Sheriff Hartson's proposal will bring division to our state in conflict. We should not allow this to happen in this state or anywhere in America. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to thank all the groups that's been working so hard for many years on all of these issues that I just poked about. 1199, SCIU, Bricklayers and Alliance Crafts Men Local 3, Centro Comunitario de Trabajadores, Community Economic Development Center, Greater Southern Massachusetts Labor Council, Mass Law Reform Institute, 
N NWACP, Neighbor to Neighbor, SEIU 509, SEIU 888, yeah, yeah. Southeastern Massachusetts Building Trades Council, United Faith Interfaith Action, and We Won't Go Back, New Bedford. Yeah. Yeah. And at this time, I would like to call because we do have the speakers that will, you will hear the stories of all the uh, of all the people that's here today and what um, is going on here. Adrian Ventura, Central Comunitario de Tabajo. Tabajo. Great job. Aquí de nuevo. El Pueblo Unido! El Pueblo Unido! Ya lo que queremos, cuando lo queremos, eh, ah, yo necesito a ah, Isabel, tal vez me puede interpretar, por favor. Ah, yo solo quiero comentar, yo soy el director ejecutivo del Centro Comunitario de Trabajadores en Nebeco. My name is Adrián Ventura, I am the uh, direct, executive director of the uh, Workers Center in New Bedford, CCT. Y estamos aquí, estamos eh, en contra de la ley que se firmó ayer de 287G. Está criminalizando a los trabajadores. We are here to oppose the measure that was signed yesterday by this sheriff here, uh, 287G, that opposed uh, criminalization of our workers that are working here in this country. La razón es que por qué ahora la, la gente no va a poder llamar a la policía porque tiene miedo. One of the biggest issues is that people will not be able to call the police because they are living more in fear to call the police yes. if something happened to them. That's right. That's right. Yes. Las, las compañías son los responsables. Ellos son los criminales que roban los salarios a los trabajadores migrantes. Eh, acosan a los trabajadores, mujeres, no pagan a las horas de overtime. Ellos son los criminales. We know that there are many employers here that, uh, that, that, that do not pay the workers properly. They violate the workers' right. And then workers are suffering even sexual harassment at work, but they won't be able to say anything because they are going to be more in fear to call the police or to say something about their rights. La cosa es también que maldecimos al señor Hudson. Eres un maldito acá porque de verdad estás criminalizando a la gente. Esto no es justo. Estás queriendo hacer como un faraón y querés que la gente va a ser tus esclavos. This is very disgraceful to be here in front of this county jail and knowing that the sheriff Hudson has created so much fear, so much division, so much separation of our families. This is so disgraceful to see someone like here living in this community and working here. Y nosotros los inmigrantes, vuelvo a decir que nosotros somos que estamos soportando la economía acá en este país. Pagamos taxas, impuestos, pagamos todo. No somos criminales. Así que, si sí se puede, el pueblo unido jamás será vencido. Muchas gracias. So we are not the criminals. We are here, people working here, uh, properly uh, contributing to the economy of the United States. This is not fair at, at all. Thank you. Thank you. That was Isabel Lopez from Vic. I'm sorry, Vic, uh, we didn't mention another organization, organization who's been around for a really long time working on all these issues. So the next speaker we would like to call is Cynthia Rodericks, Greater Southeastern Massachusetts Labor Council. Woo! Woo! Go, Cynthia, go! Go, Cynthia, go! Go, Cynthia, go! Cynthia, go! Cynthia, go! Cynthia, go! I want to condemn an immigration policy based on hate and exploitation of union beings. No prisoner nor their families should be involved in these proposed policies. We call on the sheriff to deal with the issues in, in 
confronting the prison, prisons that he administers and stop pursuing policies that harass, intimidate, and single out persons because of their race and national origin. Thank you, Cynthia. Our next speaker, Jack Lavermento, United Interfaith Action. All right. We call on the, the Sheriff Hudson to do two things immediately. One is not to send any prisoners to the border to assist in building this wall. Two is to rescind his policy of working with ICE to create a, 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 a liaison between the two groups there. The sheriff says in his own words, we would like to use the wall as a, a buildup for our prisoners. We can think of a number of issues that our prisoners have that we can work on, such as drug rehabilitation, better education, better programs that will assist them when they come back to our communities. We don't want the worst to come back to us. We want persons who have been rebuilt to be a part of our community. The, the sheriff has said that his plan would be similar to the Peace Corps. This is so far from the Peace Corps, I cannot believe his words. The Peace Corps was to create a liaison between us and other countries. This builds a wall between countries, not the direction we want to look, the walk in. The big four, the governor, the head of the, uh, the speaker of the house, Senate the chiefs of the Senate, Senate president and the chief justice are working on a plan to come up with a system that would revamp our justice system. Yes. Our sheriff should applaud this and really join in and make sure that their ideas come to fruition are really a plan. And that's what we look to do. So again, resend their agreement with ICE, yes. and number two, go through the process of not sending our prisoners down to b help build the wall. That's the change we need. Yes. 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 yes, thank you, Jack. Our next speaker, Jim Pimentel, Bricklayers and Alliance Crafts and Local 3 and Southeastern Massachusetts Building Trade Council. <laughs> Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon. I'm here as a proud member of the Bricklayers Union, and on behalf of the Southeastern Mass Building Trades Council and Central Labor Council. We in the Bricklayers Union know how to build walls. It's what we do. <laughs> Building walls takes skill and a strong back, yes. and the Bricklayers Union fights every day to ensure that bricklayers are paid a fair wage and treated justly regardless of their race, gender, country of origin, immigration status, or whether or not they're lucky enough to belong to a union yet. Who the hell is tough talking Tommy to volunteer our family members, mostly serving time for minor offenses, right. to work as slaves? Yes. That's right. They're not, yeah. they're not some herd of cattle to be driven down to Texas to sue his political ends. That's right. You should know that for years, Tough Talk and Tommy has been accepting campaign contributions from the owner of New Bedford-based Lighthouse Masonry, a, new, a company that has been awarded tens of millions of dollars in taxpayer-funded contracts, a company that has exploited dozens, maybe hundreds, of our immigrant brothers over that time, which is why they've been fined and had to settle with the Massachusetts Attorney General's office and ICE. So while he's, so while he's scapegoating, our immigrant brothers and sisters to grab headlines, he's got his hand out taking money from those that prey on our immigrant communities in the name of more profit for themselves. Yes. In conclusion, we in the Bricklayers Union also know how to build bridges. And I say to our immigrant brothers and sisters and the families of those paying their debt to society, we stand in solidarity with you and we reject the politics of division. Thank you. 
I'm, the, I'm a senior political organizer with SEIU Local 888. We represent about 9,000 workers across Massachusetts, both in higher education and public service. And we stand here today in solidarity with people who lack a voice. But right, right behind us, right in front of us, okay, Tom Hodgson wants to enslave prisoners to build a wall that is unjust and wrong, that, Br that voters here in Bristol County voted strongly against on November 8th. So Sheriff Hodgson, you can keep your wall, you can keep your hate, because this country is already great. We also stand strongly in opposition to his proposed working with ICE here in the city of New Bedford, and also his policy to charge inmates $5 a day. This, all three of these things are unjust and wrong, and we stand here in solidarity with people who lack a voice. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Our next speaker, Dana Rivera. We won't go back, New Bedford. Dana! Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be here with a group that's multicultural. I see lots of ages. The one thing I see we all have in common is compassion and intelligence. So I'm so glad we're here. We're not going to respond to the craziness around us because the issue is too important and too strong. So um, I want to give a perspective of, uh, of someone who grew up with a father who was incarcerated. My father started the Black Panther Party here in New Bedford and was falsely incarcerated yeah. for 13 years for murder he didn't commit. And during that time, what the uh, government did was they sent party uh, Black Panther Party members in prisons far away from their families. So it was very, I, I couldn't visit him when he was in Leavenworth. I couldn't visit him when he was outside of the state. My mom couldn't afford it. And the money that, that is made, profiteering off of the collect calls. And these are, these are things that prisoners need and that kids like me growing up need the connection with your parents. And it's inhumane yes. to do that and yes. to break up families that way. Yes. And to all the children right now who have parents that are incarcerated, they're doing time as well. And if you pull their parents away to build a wall, you're putting them in, in a deeper hole than what they're already in. So I think this issue is an issue that affects children, and we should be cognizant of that. I don't want to take too much time, but I did want to bring that point up. Um, because I, I volunteer with kids whose parents are incarcerated, and it, it's tough on the kids. It really is tough. And um, you, you, the prison is supposed to make people better, and you don't do that by ripping them away from their families and not allowing them to have that bond. I, I think that's a human right. So I know we'll continue to fight for this. I know we'll continue to fight not only for the rights of prisoners, not only for our brothers and sisters from other countries, but for the kids that will also be affected. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dana. Our next speaker will be Bruce Rose from NWACP. In light of the new incoming administration in Washington. Yeah. In light of the new admin incoming administration in Washington, it is absolutely imperative that we speak out and take action against any and all manifestations of the racist, misogynist, xenophobic, and generally hateful sentiments that this administration represents. Whether it be the administration itself, or by its surrogate actors, or by those who would exploit those hateful sentiments for publicity purposes, we have a moral obligation to challenge those actions, words, and sentiments. The New Bedford NAACP denounces the proposed recruitment and transfer of inmates to our southern border to build Donald Trump's wall. <laughs> The anti-immigrant ideology and policies of this incoming administration are ab abhorrently inhum inhumane and in no way represent the best interests of our nation. Instead of building walls, Donald Trump and Sheriff Hodgson 
should consider building bridges to the communities of people who have been forced yes, yes, yes. to immigrate here because of the adverse impact of U.S. foreign and economic policies on their native countries. Thank you, Bruce. Our next speaker, Corinne Williams from Community Economic Development Center. Yeah, come in. Memorandum of Agreement with ICE. This is, a, this is part of the 287G program that has been widely discredited already as being ineffective, costly, and obsolete. Many immigrants who come to New Bedford to call their home have fled violence in Central America and are working and raising families and building productive lives. More often than not, many immigrants are victims, not perpetrators of crime. That's from what we see in our neighborhoods. Woo! What about these victims of crime? How many immigrants who are, are robbed of their paychecks or assaulted in the streets will be likely to step forward now with this kind of uh, plan in place? The New Bedford Police Department and groups like CDC have been working hard to build trust between the police and the immigrant community to, to improve public safety. This measure by the sheriff undermines these community policing efforts. In other communities, in Arizona and North Carolina, these types of agreements have destroyed the trust between the immigrant community and the local police, creating more fear and pushing many immigrants deeper into the shadows to become more vulnerable uh, to, to crime. Is this what we want to see happen here? No! Lastly, studies have shown that in North Carolina uh, uh, that this program netted very few violent, violent criminals, and in one county, 57% of the people picked up had traffic violations. Oh, no. So are we in a position, do we really think it makes sense to deport mothers, fathers, and grandparents just for running a stop sign? No! no! Sheriff, if you really care about public safety, you would rethink this costly and ineffective program that separates families, creates more fear, and mistrust in our community. And we, as taxpayers in Bristol County, shouldn't have to pick up the tab for yet another one of your publicity stunts. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Corinne. Our next speaker, Jerry Fishburn, Fishburn for, from 1199 and East SEIU. Jerry! Jerry! Jerry. <laughs> I may have lost my voice already. It's going to be a long four years. So good afternoon, 1199 SEIU. It's long, it's long, has long stood for real immigration reform, not the kind of racist inspired fixes that our president, incoming president, has proposed and that the sheriff apparently endorses. We have been fighting for immigration reform that keeps families together, right. that protects immigrant workers, and that ensures that discrimination and exploitation ends. We are proud to stand here with our allies and our brothers and sisters in the Coalition of Social Justice, with our Labor Council, our brothers and sisters in the labor movement, and the increasing voices of resistance that are calling out that we will not go back. On several past weeks, we've been mobilizing to say we will not go back to a time where health care, where millions of people have no health care. This weekend, we'll be marching to ensure that we do not go back to a time when our sisters face discrimination and sexist attacks. We will not go back. And today, we're here to say that we will not go back to exploit the hatred and racism to grab headlines and votes. We won't go back to decades ago when there were laws that kept people because of their cultures or their religion from coming into our countries. And Sheriff Hodgson, we will no, God, not go back to 
to a time when unpaid labor in chains replaces the work of public workers. Yeah. 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 We won't go back. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 